Bugsworth Basin, which is a little arm just off the bottom of the Peak Forest Canal near Whaley Bridge. Uh, we were moored here a couple of days ago uh, for a few nights and um, we're just walking back into Whaley Bridge to have a look at the state of the reservoir since it's uh, near collapse. So there's a bit of footage coming up now about Bugsworth Basin. And Whaley Bridge. And Whaley Bridge. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're at Bugsworth Basin. Buggy Basin. Buggy Basin in the village of Bugsworth. Now the village of Bugsworth used to be called Bugsworth. But in the early 20th century, the local vicar and the head teacher decided they didn't like the name Bugsworth for some reason. And so uh, campaigned for it to be changed to Bucksworth with an X. But the basin here, the canal basin, the famous canal basin is still called Bugsworth Basin or Buggy as Buggy uh, basin, the locals call, locals it, call it, yeah. Famous for its uh, limestone quarries six miles away. The limestone was brought here uh, on a tramway either uh, burnt in the furnaces behind us, in the lime kilns behind us, or transported off to various sites. And apparently when the kilns were burning, the whole area was filled with a sulphurous fog. It must have stank, wasn't it? It must have done, yeah. It's, it's not very residential around here, but the whole area can't have been a good place to be. Now it's so peaceful and beautiful. Fantastic place to moor. It's just started peeing down. <laughs> It's the last day of August and uh, we're at the end of our Peak Forest, half of the Peak Forest Canal from Marple. Uh, so we've got to go back towards Marple to the Ashton Canal, which is at the junction of the Huddersfield Canal. And we really had a good time and uh, we got to walking yesterday. Big walking. <laughs> we've done lots, we've done all the things we wanted to do, haven't we? And it's, it's been pretty much big town free down here isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Um, just what we've really wanted isn't it? We really yeah. enjoyed it. The hills and the location and camping at the high peak yesterday was fantastic. The only other memorable thing about Bugsworth, Bugsworth is the pub used to be owned by Pat Phoenix. Oh yeah. <laughs> who played the character Elsie Tanner in Coronation Street. Some of our American followers might not know what the hell I'm on about. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an amazing place because it yeah. is so peaceful. It's kept and looked after by a warden here. There are some long-term moorings, but it, the whole place is kept really, really lovely, but not commercialised. There's a little canal shop. But to think that this was the busiest inland waterways port mm. in, uh, in the industrial pipe. And now it's just beautiful, really lovely time. It's a shame you can only stay here for 48 hours, really. It but is, I yeah. guess that gives everybody a chance to enjoy it. Yeah. So come here, it's great. It is a good, good day out here, yeah. yeah. Only spoilt by the traffic going by, but uh, hey ho. Right, let's go. Let's pootle. As you can see, access to the reservoir is strictly limited. So we can't get to the edge to get a decent look. Now here we are at the foot of the dam at the reservoir at Whaley Bridge. And it's not until you get up close to it that you see the size of the thing and the enormity of what could have been. Millions and millions of gallons of water just flowing through here and the devastation it could have caused, it's unbelievable. And talking to the local residents, the, the amount of water they pumped out was made the river so high, it was touching the tops of the bridges, hurtling through the town. It must have been frightening. Well, we're back in New Mills, 
and uh, we bumped into a couple of viewers the other day and we can't for the life of us remember their names all we know is that he goes by the name of Brownie so cheers both they recommended we come here it's wonderful um, you would have known it was here there's nothing in the canal guidebook and it's only a 10 minute walk from the canal but it's fantastic it's like you're in another country that suddenly the rocks gates massive bridges huge walkway um, and even a little hydro power plant here and this is called the Tours Hydro and it's a community owned turbo screw it's not working at the moment because it's recently flooded um, but we just didn't have any idea that any of this was here we so often shoot through places well we don't shoot we put through places but even then, sometimes you miss what's right on your doorstep. I know, it's just a 10 minute walk away and we've got all this to, to wander around. This site was occupied by two mills, utilising the power of the water to control them. And this mill opposite, Tor Vale Mill, was in continuous operation for 200 years and didn't close down until 2000. I'm just saying to Rich, it's really good that they've, instead of letting a place like this go to rack and ruin, They've turned it into a lovely place to walk, but not only that, it's a wedding venue. Now, if only we'd known. <laughs> but it's, it seems to be a little bit bizarre that a building that so many people worked for a pittance in and suffered, I guess, is now a wedding venue. A bit of a, what's the word? A paradox. Contra, a paradox. Is it? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Just before we went to the Tours Industrial Heritage Trail, uh, I had a look online on YouTube at some video of the area so I can get an idea of what it's all about. And uh, just read someone's comment uh, on someone's video that they'd taken of a drone drone video. And uh, it turns out that uh, this guy lives locally to the area and is a drone enthusiast. So I liked his channel and subscribed. And we got chatting and um, coincidentally it turns out that he and his wife cycled past our boat <laughs> the other week when Fran was on the roof cleaning it off and he, he was actually in our videos that was just that was amazing wasn't it the last video wasn't it they went yeah. back and watched it and yeah. they said wouldn't it be funny if we were on the video and they saw themselves yeah. just going past so anyway we invited him aboard and this is a little clip of uh, Andy uh, coming to see us on our boat but actually, the coincidence goes back a bit further than that, doesn't oh, it? Because on, we only d did that walk around that area because for the last video, we happened to be filming up on a bridge and a couple called up to us and they were viewers. And we went down and had a chat with them. We'd already gone past that area and we'd missed it, hadn't we? Yeah. Once. Yeah, and once. they'd said, oh, you must go. It's really interesting to go all around the on old return, mills. Yeah. So when we went back from Bugsworth Basin, um, we decided to go and have a look and, and so there were so many coincidences that we wouldn't have been there and but really lovely guy and his uh, his drone footage is amazing it's just superb Absolutely yeah just amazing, really good so. yeah so uh, here he is <laughs> so we've got a guest with us today <laughs> another youtuber <laughs> yes but not a narrowboat youtuber it's andy from drone uk 
Hello everyone. Hi there. <laughs> okay. And he's bought and his, one of his toys. Yes, this is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. So that's what I do a lot of my drone videos with, especially over the last year. All sorts of videos. Um, did a lot and funnily enough this is sort of why we've kind of joined together as we sort of saw each other's videos um, very recently. Um, and they were just passing by where I live and they actually caught us when we were on our bikes which was crazy um, I'm gonna put a screenshot of that in my video but um, I do a lot of drone videos of this area so um, you know if you're sort of interested in this sort of area of the journey that they're on then you might actually enjoy a lot of the footage that I've captured Brilliant. so there'll, there'll be a link below to Andy's channel but look Fran Look, I know. Look how big his drone is to mine. I know. And I knew this was going to be a bad visit. Is that far away or is it just small? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. on a brighter note. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. look. Andy's brought us a big bag of swizzles. Yeah. Yeah, because he actually works with the, with the, yes. with the swizzles company. And um, we know somebody that loves a swizzle, don't we? I love we? a swizzle. So, yeah. Happy. You'll be. Uh, you won't be getting any any trouble out of me tonight. No. Should be a good selection of the chew crew. There. Look at that. <laughs> chew crew. <laughs> I have no, no. Have no <laughs> teeth left. <laughs> so anyway, have a look on uh, below the link. Uh, have a look at Andy's channel. Some superb drone footage there, uh, especially the one at Manchester. I loved it, and uh, it's uh, it's a. Um, a lesson in editing as well isn't it it is yeah very yeah. professionally done lovely, lovely stuff yeah. lovely work we're at marple flight of lux we're going down heading towards manchester uh, still on the peak Forest Canal. We've got 16 locks to do today, so that's going to take the best part of four hours, I guess. So here it goes. It's the first set of locks we've done since the Bosley flight on the Macclesfield, so that's been over three weeks ago, so uh, nice to get a bit of lock exercise in. We're at the first of the Marple locks. Um, just stopped in the lock for a second. I went to set the next lock and Rich went to get rid of rubbish. We left the boat in the top of the lock and uh, by the time I came back from setting the uh, second lock the boat was halfway down this one. It is so leaky. I've gone all this way down before the paddles are even open on the gate. So I managed to leap onto the boat quickly and um, hope that Rich would get back before we realised, before I thought that I'd just sunk and disappeared. <laughs> Interesting these locks, there's no walkway actually on the gate or very little of one that I wouldn't trust so when you've wound this paddle up you've got to pop down the steps walk across the bridge back up the steps and wind the paddle up not bad for exercise but not good for my old knees <laughs> Beautiful locks though, all the same.
Well, that's not bad time. About two and a half hours to do 16 locks. There's just one more after this. And we can moor up and have a bit of lunch. What's for lunch, Fran? <laughs> Beans on toast. <laughs> Ruin. 